Hi and welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. In this video we will tell you all you need to know about the Schifflera arboricola, also known as the dwarf umbrella plant, which is an extremely easy to care for plant, but there are things you need to know. Now as usual we will divide this video up into four parts. You have the purchase, the planting, the placement and the care of the plant. So you can skip forward but we always recommend you to watch the entire video to get all you need to know. And everything in this video is based on our over 20 years experience of taking care of different types of Schaeffleras. Now if you like this video please give it a thumbs up that really helps this channel a lot. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. And also follow us on Facebook and Instagram to get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes a little bit more. So starting off with the purchase, when you go out to buy your Schifflera, uh, you need to know that there are different varieties of Schifflera. Now in this video we will be talking about the Arboricola and the different varieties of that species uh, and that is usually called the umbrella plant or more specifically the dwarf umbrella plant. Now here in Sweden we call it the exact same way, we call it paraplu aralia which is just a translation of the English word. But there are different varieties of Schifflera. Now next to me here I have a different one and this is the Schifflera amate which has these big leaves on it, really, really nice and big leaves. Now, the amate actually acts a little bit different. So we're not talking about the amate in this video, we're talking about the arboricola. So we will be making a separate video on this variety of Schifflera. But even when you go out to buy the arboricola, there are different varieties of that species. Now, Next to me here I have one that is usually just named Schifflera arboricola Nora, the name Nora. Uh, and uh, as you can see here it is, and it's usually called that when it's quite small like this. Uh, but if you buy a bigger variety of the same plant as I have next to me here, which actually has a very thick and nice braided stem like this one here. You never see anything else than Schifflera arboricola. Even if it sh could be the Nora variety, it usually never has this extra name. Uh, now that doesn't really mean anything because all of the arboricolas actually have the same care. Now another variety of the Schifflera arboricola is the gold capella and we have that one here and that is actually a variegated form of this plant. Now variegation just means that it has different colors on the leaves. This is a chimeral variegation which means that it's not a stable variegation. It could just like that transition and start to become full green. Now if you want to know more about variegation, different types of variegation, we have a video on that. We'll put a link to that so you can go and watch that later on. But all of these varieties that are of the arboricola has the same care. Now the arboricola is not an expensive plant, at least not here in Sweden. It's quite a cheap plant and the reason for that is that it grows very very quickly which means that it doesn't have to be standing in the garden center or in, or in the greenhouse for a long period of time. So the price is usually quite low on this. And you can also buy this either as a small windowsill plant like this one, uh, which looks like a small branched variety, or you can buy it in a bigger branched variety as we have the gold capella here which is quite huge but you can also buy it with a finished complete trunk. Now this one has a very nice braided trunk but you can also buy it in a single trunk. Now when you do that what I want you to do is that 
if you buy a smaller one like this one, take a look at how many starters or how many trunks or stems that are coming out of the pot. This one actually just has one that has been pruned and then branched out. If you have one by all the ones you're going to buy that has more than one trunk here, that is the one I would go for because that will make your plant or your branched plant even thicker and fuller. But if it only has one trunk coming out of the soil, pick the one that has the most amount of branches coming out from the trunk. That will also mean that you will get a very full and lush plant. If you buy a bigger plant that has the stem, like this one next to me here, then I would choose the one that has the thickest stem. You don't have to look at the crown and pick the one that has the fullest crown. I would look at the stem and pick the one that has the thicker stem. Now the reason for that is the thicker the stem, the more ability the plant has to move water and nutrients inside of its body. Which means that when you get this home, you have a bigger chance of getting a really nice big lush and thick crown from a thicker stem. So I would go for the stem and not the crown when I buy this plant. Another thing you need to consider is when you buy this, always take a look at the roots. Do this in the shop. I want you to knock off the pot in the shop and take a look at the roots. Now, this is a plant that has a massive root system. It is really dense and really thick. So let's see here. I'll take this off. Yes. This is what it should look like when you buy this plant. You need to have a massive root system. Now, the quality overall isn't that important because it's, a, it's an extremely easy to care for plant. But pick the plant that has this really nice root system because that will help you to just let it thrive in your home when you get, when you get to your home. Uh, and also the Roots should look like this. They should have this really almost white color. It could be a little bit yellow in color as well, but it should never ever be dark brown or black because that is a sign of root rot. So it needs to be this almost white, nice color to it. But always knock off the pot and look at the roots. Next thing is of course to look at the leaves. Take a look at all the leaves on the plant and take a look on both sides of the leaves. And what you're looking for here is that you do not want to pick a plant that has any burnt tips or burnt edges on them. You do not want to have any black spots on them. And especially you do not want to have any pests on them. And sometimes you cannot see the pests, but if you look very closely at the leaves and you have small small dots on them that when you feel the leaf like this you can actually feel that there is something there there is some small small dots on them that can be an indication of pests so make sure that the leaves are green lush and doesn't have any flaws on them the Ichoflera arboricola is a flowering plant However, I have 20 years experience of taking care of these plants and I have only seen it flower indoors once. And that was a very, very old Schefflera. Uh, now, so you buy this plant mainly for the foliage, for these nice fingered uh, leaves. So don't count on it flowering indoors. And the reason for this is, of course, that you don't have the light and you don't have the humidity it wants to be able to flower indoors. Now, the flower itself almost looks like the flowers on a grapevine. Um, and uh, if it is pollinated, you will also get small berries. So it really looks like grapes on this plant. But as I said, you will probably never have that if it 
isn't a very, very old plant. The arboricola can withstand quite cold temperatures. It can actually withstand down to 5 to 8 degrees Celsius or 41 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you are buying this and taking it home from the shop, you do not need to make any extra care of uh, wrapping it in plastic or in paper or something if it's not freezing temperatures because that can harm this plant then you need to make sure that they wrap it in something otherwise you can just take it home um, and not worry about it damaging the plants during transportation moving on to planting now when you get this plant to your house we do not recommend you to repot it immediately even if the roots look like this which is it's to say that it really should be repotted but not directly when you get it home now the reason for that is that when you get this plant if it's been standing at the growers then it has been moved to the shop where you bought it and then moved directly to your house so much has happened to the light humidity to the heat for this plant that if you also repot it it can be too much and you can get problems with it losing leaves or it can even get damaged. So our recommendation is that when you get this to your house, no matter what the roots look like, just let it stand in the pot you bought it in for at least a couple of months, maybe four to six months before you repot it. But when you repot uh, after that time, then try and repot at least once a year. Now, this is a very fast growing plant and the roots as well. The more the roots grow, the more the leaves grow, the more the stems grow. So if, if you repot this at least once a year, it will grow faster. However, that might not be what you want. If you want it to stagnate a little bit, if you want it to not grow as fast, you can actually let it become a little bit root bound. By doing that, it stops growing, or at least it doesn't grow as fast. Uh, and that can be the case if you want to have this plant on your windowsill, you do not want it to grow too fast so you have to move it from that windowsill that is one thing you can do so by choosing when to repot you're actually choosing how much this will grow and when you repot this plant do not repot it in a too large of a pot or container just go up one or two sizes every time you repot now the reason for that is this is a plant that likes to drink quite a lot of water. However, it does not like to be standing in too wet soil for a long period of time. And if you plant this in a too large of a container, that soil will be moist for a very long period of time and that can hurt the roots. So always repot a little bit bigger then maybe one or two years later, a little bit bigger again and so on so that you never get problems with the roots. Our recommendation is also that when you repot, use a pot that has drainage holes. Because one of the things that can actually kill your Schifflera arboricola is if it's standing in water. So if you have a closed pot where the excess water cannot get out, that can actually harm your plant. So make sure you have drainage holes so that you can see to it that it's not standing in water. Now this is also a plant that is perfect for a self-watering system. It will thrive, it will grow, it will love that form of potting. So if you have a self-watering container, use it for this plant. Just make sure that you have a good drainage in the soil now we have a video on how you can get good drainage. So you can go and watch that as well. And that also applies in a self-watering system. Um, and you can also use 
promise for this plant. It loves to be planted in almost entire, entirely pomace. We have a pomace video as well, so you can go and watch if you don't know what pomace is. But the most important thing here is that when you repot it, you can use almost any type of soil. Normal standard planting soil will be perfect for your arboricola. But what I recommend you to do is to mix up just a little bit of either leca, perlite or pumice with that standard potting soil to get that little bit of a better drainage to it. Because it wants to have a lot of water, but it doesn't want to have it for a long period of time. So it's good if it drains out a little bit better than in normal planting soil, which has a tendency to just soak up a lot of water, then hold it for a very long period of time. Moving on to placement. And that is so easy with this plant. You can take your arboricola and place it almost anywhere in your house. And I mean almost anywhere. It loves to be placed on a windowsill in the northern, southern, eastern or western parts. It really doesn't matter. And you could also place your arboricola a little bit into the room. So in a darker spot. However, if you want to have this placed somewhere where you know it's a little bit darker, then what I recommend you to do is that when you've bought this plant, get it home to your house, make sure to place it somewhere where it's a little bit lighter, at least for the first couple of months, so that it settles in your home and then you can move it to a darker spot. Now the same reason as before in repotting. If it comes from the growers to the shop to your home and then directly to somewhere where it's a little bit darker, it can injure the plant. What will happen is that it will start to lose leaves, just drop them completely off. They're just green and they just drops off the plant. But if you place it somewhere where it's a little bit lighter, let it get used to your home and then move it somewhere a little bit darker. That transition will be a little bit better and it will continue to work in that darker spot. With that said, if you want it to grow and be lush and full, give it light. And the more light you give it, the more it will grow, the more it will be full and dense. Um, so this is one of the very few tropical plants that we can recommend you to place in a southern window with full direct sunlight almost all of the day and it will just thrive. There aren't a lot of plants that can handle that placement but this is one of them. Now if you buy this plant in winter time this is a plant that goes a little bit dormant in winter time. If you buy it in winter time and you get it home, don't place it in a southern window if you have a lot of sunlight. Uh, if you know that there will be a lot of sunlight within, the few, within a few days of getting it to your house. Place it somewhere first where you can slowly adapt it to that direct sunlight because otherwise it can get a little bit burned. But once it's gotten used to that very light positioning, it will thrive, it will love that placement. Now another thing concerning light is that if you have a arboricola that has this, like this one, this very dense, very thick, big, lush crown, you should never put this in a darker spot. Because what will happen with this dense crown is that it will gradually start to lose the leaves inside of the crown here. And it will not be as dense and as full. So if you have a very, very dense crown, place it somewhere where it gets a lot of light and preferably also some direct sunlight because then it will continue to have this full crown. But if you have a plant that is a little bit not as dense, it's a little bit um, ganglier like this one here, 
it's not a problem if it doesn't get that much sunlight or, it, or if it doesn't get that much light at all because all of the leaves are getting some light. But in that big, nice, thick crown, not all of the leaves will be there if you place it in a darker spot. Now, one variety of the arboricola that needs a little bit more light that you sh never should place in a darker spot is the variegated one, the gold capella. If you put this plant in a darker spot, what will happen since, like I said before, this is a chimeral variegation, which means that it's not stable. So what can happen if you put it in a darker spot is that it will start to revert into all green. It will start to shoot out new leaves that doesn't have the variegation on it. To keep this variegation or to try and keep this variegation, you need to give the gold capella a lot of light. But this shouldn't either be placed in direct sunlight. Now the reason for that is that the variegated parts of the plant, it doesn't have the chlorophyll, which means that it cannot handle that direct sunlight as well as the all green varieties. So what could happen if you place it in direct sunlight is that it could get burnt. Now, burnt, burnt leaves, I'll show you how burnt leaves can look like. We have one here. This is actually our cameraman's own plant that he's brought with us here. Uh, this is what it looks like when a leaf gets burnt or uh, gets burnt by sunlight. It gets this light brown uh, spots on them that are completely dry. If you touch them, you can feel that the cells are completely dead. It's just dry. And that will happen on the gold capella if you place that in direct sunlight. Now, another thing concerning the light is that you will have a slight color difference on your standard arboricola if you place it light or darker. Now we actually have, so we can show you the difference here. Now this plant here is, we just gotten this from the growers. So this has been standing in extreme light. It has the optimum fertilization. It has the optimum temperature, humidity and all of that. So it's growing and you can see the new growth here. But also on the entire uh, plant here, it has it's a little bit lighter than the one I have here on this side. Now these, this plant has been standing here at our place for maybe a month or so. And what has happened here to this one is that it hasn't gotten the same light. It hasn't gotten the same heat or humidity. And the new leaves on this has started to become adult. So it's it started to harden off and uh, gotten the cuticle. The cuticle is the waxy surface on the leaves that protects the, the leaves. And as you can see here, it's a little bit darker. So if you place your arboricola in a dark spot, it will stay quite dark in color, dark green. But if you place it very, very light or in direct sunlight, it will continue to be a little bit brighter or lighter in color like this one. The arboricola loves to have a very humid environment, uh, but it can withstand very dry humidity as well. This is one of the reasons that this is such an easy to care for plant, is that it can handle very dry. But our experience is that if your humidity indoors drops below 30%, then you can start to get problems with the leaves. What will happen is that they will start to droop a little bit. What happens inside of the plant is that even if you give it water, it cannot keep that water inside of the plant because the water wants to evaporate out and try and even out that you have 100% humidity or 99% down here by the roots and you have below 30% here in the air. So it wants to even out that. And the easiest way is that the plant drinks the water, 
takes it up in the stems out to the leaves and then it evaporates from the stomatas, the small windows that can open and close here on the leaves. So it evaporates straight out of the leaves. Now if it drops below those 30%, you can see that it starts to get big problems. Uh, and it cannot hold the water that it wants to be able to, to continue live, to, to continue to thrive and be healthy. So it will start to droop. What can also happen is that the tips of the leaves here will start to become dry and brown. When you touch them, they're completely dry. You can see the cells are dead. It's because the plant is unable to push the water all the way out to the tips of the leaves. This can be a humidity problem. And here in Sweden, we can have real low humidity in winter time. So that is when you need to watch the plant and see how it does. Now, as I said, this is an extreme. It's a very, very tough plant, so you probably won't have problems. But if you see these problems, you know what it is and you can try and handle that. One way is to put the, some, uh, some water around the plant that evaporates and helps to increase the humidity around the plant. You can also go out and buy a humidifier and make the entire room a little bit more humid. Mm -hmm. That will also work. And then you're helping the plant to keep that water inside. As I said in the beginning, this, can with, this plant can withstand quite cold temperatures. So it's not a plant that you have to worry about drafts. If you, uh, so you can place this somewhere where you know that you have uh, an open window, even in winter time. It's usually not a problem. It only gets to be a problem if it's really, really cold drafts and freezing drafts. Then you could notice that the plant is affected. Otherwise, this is a perfect plant to place somewhere where you know that the window is drafty or if you open and close the windows often, even during winter. This is a perfect plant for that placement. It can react though to be placed just above a radiator because that warm, dry heat can push the humidity to go below those 30% that we spoke earlier about. So if you see that you have a really, really heated radiator just below this plant, you should, maybe you should just move it a little bit, little bit further into the room or to another window where it doesn't get that really, really heated dry air. So moving on to the care of this plant. Now this is a easy to care for plant. And one thing that is usually in common with these easy to care for plants is that it really doesn't matter how you take care of them. They just work either way. And this is one of those plants. Now it drinks quite a lot of water, but it doesn't get hurt by drying out a little bit in between waterings. Uh, the only thing that can hurt this plant is if it is standing in water. So when you water this plant, make sure to water it and take away the excess water so that it's not standing in water. If you do that, it's actually going to show you when it needs water again. Because when it starts to hang a little bit or droop a little bit, you can see, oh, it's time to water again, and you can water it. By doing it like that, it will not grow as fast, which could be what you want as well. So by not repotting and by not giving it a lot of water, letting it drying out a little bit, it will stunt the plant. It will stop growing as much. But if you want it to grow, then you should make sure that it has access to water all the time. So if you, off, if you water a little bit more often, not more water, just a little bit more often, make sure the excess water is taken away, then it will start to grow and grow quite fast. Another way of knowing if you've given it too much water or if it's standing in water is that you can see that the tips and edges of the leaves are starting to become 
dark brown or black. And when you touch those edges, you can almost feel that they are soft and mushy, not dry like, uh, like we've shown you before with sunburn, but soft. If that happens, that you get a lot of those brown soft spots or uh, edges of the leaves, then you know that you've given it too much water. Now, if that goes too far, you could get root rot. Now, if you get root rot, you will get dark spots on the leaves as well. Not just edges, but spots. This can also be a sign that the root rot, uh, which is a fungal problem, you can also get other types of fungal problems and that will show you with black spots on the leaves. So if you see that, you know that you've probably given it too much water or it's standing in water for a long period of time. So just make sure that it dries out completely and then uh, stop giving it that amount of water. Now on the other spectrum there, if you let it dry out for a long period of time, as I said before, it will start to wilter, but if you let it go too far, it will look like this. Now, we've actually let this plant dry out completely for this video. And then it will look like this. It's not dead yet, but you can, as you can see here, it has started to wilter a lot. The lower leaves here are starting to fall off and they have become um, a little bit yellow brownish, but the top leaves are still green. So it's not dead yet, but it's almost there. And this is when it's not got, gotten enough water. You can also see uh, on the stem here that the stem itself has started to shrivel. It's almost as if it's starting to implode and gets uh, like wrinkles on the stem. That is also a sign that it's not getting that much or not getting enough water. Then it will look like this. But if, when, not if, when I start to water this plant again, it will come alive again and it will start to grow. However, all of these leaves that I, we have lost here is going to be lost. So this will probably be a stemmed Schifflera going on in the future. Now we recommend you, when taking care of this plant, we recommend you to shower the plant every now and again. Now this is not for the humidity. If you want to raise the humidity by showering your plants, you need to do that very often. At least, if not once a day, then every one or two days. If, you, if it's because of the humidity. Now I want you to shower this plant every now and again to get rid of dust. It will over time get a lot of dust on the leaves uh, and that hinders the photosynthesis. It hinders the plant to grow, it hinders the plant to open and close those small stomatas that moves all of the water and nutrients inside of the plant. So just rinse it off to get that dust away from the plant. Now, when it starts to grow, and it will grow, you will have to prune it. Now, how do you do that? Well, I have one here that if I wanted to keep this a short, stubby, small, bushy Schifflera, I need to prune this because it's starting to grow up here. Now, when you prune this, you will make the cut in between two nodes. Now, what is that? Well, a node is where the leaf comes from here. So in between two nodes is where you make the cut. And you make it directly in between, not too close to the node, because what will happen where you've made that cut, it will die back a couple of millimeters. Uh, on the stem. So if you make that cut too close to a node, that node will also die. That's why you make it in between two nodes, so that you know that you have a couple of millimeters so it doesn't harm the plant downwards. <clears throat> what you also can do here is that when you make that cut, the new shoots, the new buds here, 
is going to come out from the node, from where that leaf is coming from. That means that when you prune this, you can actually choose what direction the new shoots will have. So if I prune this plant here, I have a good way of pruning it right here because I have two nodes almost at the same level. So if I prune it here, those two nodes will generate new growth and they will send them out in the same way as the leaves are, are um, turned right now. So just go in and make that cut in between those two nodes. If it is a larger uh, arboricola like this big one here and you, when you start to prune that sometimes you have to prune the thicker stems as well and you can do that you can prune even the stems that has gotten the bark on them you could prune them and get them to just flush out again <clears throat> to create new leaves um, so you can basically cut this plant almost anywhere on the stems or on the branches and you will have new growth. But when should you do this? And this, you, you could prune this plant any time of year. But if you prune a bigger, thicker part of a stem or a branch, I recommend you to do that in springtime. Now the reason for that is that in springtime, like I said before, this plant goes a little bit dormant. Uh, and when it starts to grow again, when you get that raising temperatures, more light for the plant, it wakes up and it starts to grow. If you make the cut then, you have a higher chance of getting a lot of new buds on that cut. If you do that cut in winter time when it's dormant it will produce new buds but not as many so it won't be as full it won't get to be as lush. However if you're just pruning a plant like this one that has gotten a little bit too big you can prune it almost any time of the year because you don't hurt the plant you're actually helping it to become a little bit fuller, but you're not as dependent on the numbers of buds shooting out from that stem if it's small like this one. But if it's big like this one and you cut it back hard, you want it to become as full as possible. Moving on to nutrients and fertilizer. This is a fast growing plant. The leaves grow fast, the roots grow fast, which also means that it needs quite a lot of fertilization. So our recommendation is to, during the active period, which is usually at least up here in the northern hemisphere, from around March till October, during the active period, make sure that you fertilize your plants. Use a full coverage fertilizer. It doesn't need to be a specific fertilizer for Huefleras. Just buy a full coverage fertilizer, add it to the water when you're watering and just follow the instructions on the label. Now usually it means that if you water let's say once a week you should add fertilizer, a little bit of fertilizer to that water maybe every week or every other week depending on what type of a brand you're using. Just follow the instructions but make sure to give fertilizer. Because what can happen if you don't is that the plant will, it will start, continue to grow, but it will become a little bit weaker. When it becomes weaker, the, uh, the uh, nice waxy surface here on the leaves will become a little bit thinner, which also means that it will become more prone to getting pests. So if you're not fertilizing your Hueflera, you have a higher risk of getting pests. And also, if... I'll take up our cameraman's plants here again. 
if you do not repot your plant regularly and you do not give it fertilizer regularly, what will happen is that the whole plant will become a little bit stunned. It will not stop growing. It will also get, if you see the difference here in the coloration of these two plants here, you can see that this is a little bit lighter. And this is because it doesn't have the nutrients it needs. And when we raise this out of the pot here, we see why. Because this has a massive root system outside of the pot here. And these roots are not feeling very well because they get some, uh, they get some humidity when, when they water this plant, but it dries out in between and dries out very quite fiercely when it's not any water in this pot here. And that with the case of not fertilizing makes this plant look stagnant. It looks like something is not right, but it's still living. As you can see, it's still producing new growth. But if we repot this plant and we add fertilizer to that repot, what will happen here is that it will start to change color. It will be more green, more lush, and it will start to explode and start continue to just grow fiercely. So if you have a plant that looks like this at home, don't be afraid. It's not, the race is not over yet. Just repot, give it some fertilizer and it will just kick back alive. And of course we will help the cameraman to repot this and make it a little bit better. Now, as I mentioned before, um, this is an extremely tough plant. It's an easy to care for plant. All of the things that we're talking about in this video is, are extremes. If you get a problem, you can watch this and know what's, what seems to be the problem. But the most common problem with the Hreflera arboricola are pests. And uh, there are quite a, f a lot of different types of pests that attack this plant. And usually they attack when the plant is not feeling well. As I said before, if it's a little bit stunted, if it doesn't get the nutrition it wants, if it's not repotted, it gets to be a little bit weaker and then it will draw the attention of pests. Now, there are a lot of different types of pests. Like I said, there are, for instance, spider mites love to attack this plant. You have scale loves to attack this plant, and also mealybugs. Now, the scale and the mealybugs are quite easy to see and react to. If you see scale or mealybugs, you could try and pick them off if you see them, or just go out and buy a pesticide that will remove them from the plant. It's a little bit trickier if you have spider mites, because spider mites are so small, that you cannot see them with the naked eye until they are just infested. The plant is just infested by them because then you can see the, the uh, spider webs that they are making for this. Now, I'll take up the cameraman's plant here again. Uh, this have had some form of pests on it. Uh, I had some indications here. Now what you can look for is actually when the leaves start to change a little bit in color. They become duller and they can also get spots on the leaves that are not black. They're just a little bit yellowish or a little bit white. You can just see that something is not right. When you see that, the first thing you should consider is uh, pests. It could be a pest problem. If you see that on the plant, then you need to react. Now, since it is a lot harder to see the spider mites, when you have confirmed that it is some form of a mite or a spider mite that you have on the plant, what you can do is that you can just take it outside or take it into the shower. Use the hose and just hose it off. And if you do that once a day for about two weeks, 
the spider mites will go away. They will disappear because when you hit and when you use the hose on the leaves, the spider mites are actually just knocked off. And the reason why you want to do this every day for two weeks is that you do not get the, the eggs to go away. The eggs are attached to the leaves. So when those eggs hatch, you need to get those new spider mites off and then you need to get their eggs and so on and so on. So over a period of time of two weeks about, then you will get rid of the spider mites. You can also use a pesticide, but if you buy a pesticide, make sure that it covers mites because not all pesticides cover mites. So what's the difference if I choose to rinse off it for two weeks or if I choose to buy a pesticide? Well, most of the pesticides you buy work like this. You spray it with a water-based formula. You just spray the plant then you wait one or two days and then you spray it again. This usually is enough, but if you have a massive infestation, you could have to spray it maybe a third time or maybe a fourth time, but with a couple of days in between. So using a pesticide could make it a little bit quicker. However, I prefer if I don't have to use a pesticide to use something that's a little bit more natural. So rinsing it off with water is easy and it doesn't affect the environment at all. Uh, but when you do that, when you rinse off, of course, a lot of the water will go into the pot. What you need to do then is to make sure that every time you've done that, when you rinsed it off, make sure to let all of that excess water go away. Just let it put it on the sink or something or leave it in the bathtub or leave it outside for a couple of minutes to just make sure that all of the excess water is going out of the pot. Then it's not an issue. This plant can handle being a little bit more wet for a period of two weeks. That's not a problem. Now the last thing I want to address is that this plant is mildly poisonous. What I mean by that is that you should never eat this plant. You should never eat any of the leaves or the stems, no part of the plant. And the reason for this is that it has a substance within the juices or within the plant that is called calcium oxalate. This is a form of a salt that has crystals that are extremely sharp. So when you eat a part of this plant, your body reacts to those sharp, sharp crystals immediately. And you can get swelling of the tongue and the throat. You can get vomiting. Uh, you can get a little bit sick by, from eating this. But usually, since the body reacts so quickly, you won't be able to get a lot of these into your stomach which also means that if you have a small child that you you just seen that it's taking a part and eaten a part of this plant, it's usually not a big problem because the reaction comes quite quickly. Now, if you have a child that has eaten a part of this plant, make sure to call, uh, call your local authorities to see what they recommend you to do. What you can do immediately is to give that child water or yogurt or something, something that can help that swelling in the tongue or mouth. But call the authorities and check what they want you to do if you want to go in. And also, it is mildly poisonous as well for pets. So if you have a nosy cat or if you have a dog that just won't leave anything alone, this is not the plant for you. Or put it somewhere where, it, where it's out of reach for the pets and for the children. Now this was all you need to know about the Schifflera arboricola. Now if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps this channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do. Don't forget to hit that bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. And also follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes a little bit more. Now until next time.
I don't 